Good morning, students. Welcome back to the another finite element analysis session. My name is P. Naveen Jaws, Assistant Professor, Department of Mechanical Engineering, Rohini College of Engineering and Technology. Today we are going to discuss about the third unit, two-dimensional scalar variable problems. Two-dimensional scalar variable problems. This is the syllabus of the two-dimensional scalar variable problems. In this unit, we are going to see about the second order 2D equations involving scalar variable functions, then variational formulation, finite element formulation, then triangular elements, and shape functions and element matrices and vectors, then application to field related problems, then thermal problems, then torsion of the circular shape, non circular shape problems, then quadrilateral elements, and the last one is higher order elements. Next one is course outcome. After the completion of the third unit, we can able to analyze the finite element equations to solve the two dimensional scalar variable problems. Okay, now we are going to see the introduction of the two dimensional scalar variable problems. In this two dimensional scalar variable problems, two dimensional elements are defined by three or more nodes in a two dimensional plane. In one dimensional problems, we have a maximum of two nodes in a element. But here in three dimensional elements, minimum is three nodes and maximum is number of nodes. The basic element useful for two dimensional analysis is a triangular element. So in this two dimensional element, the basic element is triangular element because from the diagram itself, we can able to understand in triangular element, the minimum number of nodes is three. Likewise, in rectang rectangular element, four. Quadrilateral element, four. And parallelogram, four. So these are the uh, two dimensional elements. Okay. Now, the quadrilateral element can be obtained by assembling two or four triangular elements. Quadrilateral element is nothing but it's a special form of the rectangle and parallelogram. So uh, here, this element is obtained by assembling two or four triangular elements. We can able to obtain this quadrilateral element by assemble the two or four triangular elements. Okay, in this uh, method, the displacement vector u is given by u is equal to uv. Okay, so in two dimensional scalar variable problems, the displacement vector u is given by, in one dimensional, we can, we can select the displacement as u, but here we are going to check the displacements as u and v. Well, u and v are the x and y components of u respectively. The stresses and strains are given as here we are going to take the stresses sigma is equal to sigma x, sigma y and tau x y. But then we are in one dimensional element we are taking just a stress only. But here we are taking for instead of sigma we are taking sigma x, sigma y and tau x y. Likewise strain also. There we are taking in one dimensional element we are taking uh, only strain E. But here we are taking instead of strain E is equal to E x, E y, gamma x y. Here, uh, for sigma is a normal stress, tau is a shear stress, then E. E is a normal strain and gamma is a shear strain. The body force is given by F is equal to vector of Fx, Fy. Now, the next one is plane stress and plane strain elements. Plane stress and plane strain elements. Normally, in two dimensional elements, the following two analyses are mainly taken for the development of a particular elements analysis. Okay, so in this particular element analysis, the main two analysis that we are going to take is one is one is plane stress analysis and another one is plane strain analysis. One is plane stress analysis, another one is plane strain analysis. First, we are going to uh, uh, discuss about the plane stress analysis. What is meant by plane stress analysis? 
plane stress is defined to be a state of stress in which normal stress sigma and shear stress tau directed perpendicular to the plane are assumed to be zero. Here, uh, this plane stress analysis, it is defined is nothing but the state of stress in which normal stress and shear stress, which is directly per perpendicular to the plane. Normal stress and the shear stress uh, is directly perpendicular to the plane is assumed to be zero. If it is perpendicular to the plane, we are going to assume it is a, its value is zero. Okay. So the given diagrams, this, these are the two diagrams is a plate with hole and plates with fillets. Here in the first diagram, there's a plate with hole and the, in the second diagram, there's a plate with a fillet are coming under plane stress analysis problems. These are the types of coming under the plane stress analysis problem because here the normal stress and shear stress is directly perpendicular to the plane. So we are taking uh, it as a plane stress analysis problem. Okay, here uh, the, uh, uh, here there is a, a traction force is there. In both the diagrams we can able to see the T. The T is called as traction force. So what is the traction force? It is called as a surface traction, pressure acting on the surface edge or face of a member. Its unit is force per area or Newton per meter square. So normal stress sigma is it is equal to zero and shear stress tau x is it and tau y is it is equal to zero because it is the both the normal stress and the shear stress are directly perpendicular to the plane. Now the next one is plane strain analysis. Plane strain analysis. Here the figure itself shows it is a plane uh, strain analysis diagrams. Here the first diagram is uh, which is dam subjected to horizontal loading. And the second diagram which shows the pipe subjected to a vertical load. So either it is a horizontal load or a vertical load. Then uh, first we have to know what is a plane strain analysis. It is defined to be a state of strain in which the strain normal to the xy plane and shear strain are assumed to be zero. Here st normal strain and shear strains are to the xy plane. Maybe either it is a horizontal, a horizontal to the xy plane or vertical to the xy plane. We are going to assume it to be a zero. Okay, so here the normal strain EZ and gamma XZ and gamma YZ is equal to zero. So this is called as plane strain analysis. Okay, the next one is finite element modeling. What is meant by finite element modeling? Um, it consists of main two things. One is discretization of the structure and the second one is numbering of nodes. First one is discretization of the structure and the second one is numbering of nodes. Okay, we know what is maybe discretization. From the first years also we studied about what is maybe discretization. Here also we are studying what is maybe discretization. It is nothing but it is a art of subdividing a structure into a convenient number of smaller components is known as discretization. So regarding to our convenient, we are going to dividing the particular element into convenient number of smaller components is known as discretization. Okay, normally in two dimensional problems, three kinds of finite elements are used. One is triangular element, one is rectangular element and the third one is quadrilateral element. Okay, now we are going to take one uh, element which is called as a continuum. Okay, what is meant by continuum? First, we should know about what is meant by continuum. Continuum elements simply model uh, small blocks of material in a component. Since they may be connected to the other elements on any of their faces, continuum elements like bricks in a building or tiles in a mosaic can be uh, used to, to build models of nearly any shape subject to nearly any loading. So this is called as continuum elements. Okay, now here in the first diagram, 
it is the uh, we take one continuum uh, continuum element uh, it is it is uh, this is the shape of this continuum element it is a irregular shape okay in the second element we are discretized this continuum element into eight number of elements and we are giving nodes or for each element okay so here first we take uh, we are uh, discretized this element here we are discretized into eight number of triangular elements okay here the, this is the first triangular element second triangular element third triangular element fourth triangular element fifth triangular element sixth seventh and eighth triangular elements for all the triangular elements here this is the midpoint for, of the all the triangle uh, triangular elements are connected with the midpoint of the continuum so we are giving nodes or mark giving name to uh, we are giving numbers for each nodes okay so for each element we are having three nodes for triangular elements for each triangular element we are having three nodes so we are taking the first element we are giving the numbering of nodes numbering of nodes is the next topic but here uh, i am telling how we are giving the numbers okay okay so here for the first element uh, this is the we, uh, for the first element we are giving a number for the nodes is 1 2 and 3 for the second element 2 3 and 4 for the third element 4 3 and 5 and for the fourth element 5 3 and 6 for the fifth element 6 3 and 7 for the sixth element 7 3 and 8 for the seventh element 8 3 and 9 and for the eighth element 9 3 and again coming to 1 it is a closed triangular element it's a closed triangular element and uh, finally we got the numbering of nodes the next topic is numbering of nodes okay here uh, for each element what are the numbers or what are the uh, nodes are there and what are the numbers we are given for the each nodes okay here these are the displacements uh, which are shown here uh, for the first element we are giving the name as 1 2 1 3 1 2 1 3 for the node numbers and for the first node there are two displacements it may be move in the x direction or maybe in the y direction so uh, then we are giving uh, displacements name as u1 and v1 for the second node u2 and v2 and the third node u3 and v3 okay now here there are eight number of elements already we saw what are the numbers given for the nodes for the first element one two three for the second element two three four for the third element four three five for the fourth element five three six for the fifth element six three seven for the sixth element seven three eight for the seventh element eight three nine and for the eighth element nine three one here these numbers the nodes which are node numbers which are given for the element are called as global numbers are called as global numbers and the reference numbers are called as local numbers or reference numbers are called as local numbers okay the next topic is cst element it is nothing but a constant strain triangular element constant strain triangular element already we saw in the last uh, diagram uh, we took the first element uh, here we are giving the node numbers as 1 2 1 3 for each node there are two displacements u1 v1 u2 v2 and u3 v3 okay what is meant by cst element a three noded triangular element is known as cst element what is from the CST element? A three noded triangular element is called as CST element. If we have a three noded element, that is called as CST element. Okay, in this CST element, it has uh, six unknown displacement degrees of freedom. That is U1, V1, U2, V2, U3, and V3. The element is 
This element is called a CSD because it has a constant strain throughout it. Okay, the next one is okay. Next, we are going to see some important formulas in this uh, third unit. First one is stiffness matrix. First one is stiffness matrix. We call it as a K matrix. So K matrix is equal to matrix of B the whole transpose matrix into matrix of D into matrix B into area into T thickness. Then the second one is strain displacement matrix B matrix. So B is equal to B matrix is equal to 1 by 2A into Q1 0, Q2 0, Q3 0. 0 R1, 0 R2, 0 and R3. R1 Q1, R2 Q2, R3 and Q3. This is the formula for the strain displacement matrix which is called as B matrix. If we want to know the matrix value of B transpose, B matrix transpose, here the rows are coming to columns and columns are uh, coming as rows. So B matrix the whole transpose is equal to Q1 0 R1, 0 R1 Q1, Q2 0 R2, 0 R2 Q2, Q3 0 R3 and 0 R3 Q3. So this is B transpose. Now the next one we are going to find out the area, area of the triangle. So area of the triangle Area of the triangular element A is equal to 1 by 2 into determinant of 1 x1 y1, 1 x2 y2, 1 x3 y3. Here x1 y1, x2 y2, x3 y3 are coordinates of the triangular element. Next one, stress strain relationship matrix D matrix for plain stress problems. For plain stress problems, D matrix is equal to E by 1 minus nu squared. D matrix is equal to E by 1 minus nu squared into matrix of 1 nu 0, nu 1 0, 0 0, 1 minus nu by 2. Here nu is nothing but it is a Poisson's ratio value. Here we are going to substitute the Poisson's ratio value and find out the D matrix. Likewise, for Plane strain problems, the stress strain relationship matrix D matrix is equal to E by 1 plus nu into 1 minus 2 nu into matrix of 1 minus nu, nu 0, nu 1 minus nu 0, 0, 0, 1 minus 2 nu by 2. Here also we are going to substitute the Poisson's ratio value, but the formula has to be taken according to the conditions given in the problem. Maybe it is a plane stress problem, means we are going to take this formula. For plane strain problem, we are going to take this formula. Okay, by this, this, by this, the third unit introduction session is over. We are going to see the problems of CST element in the next class. Thank you.